for me, it was worth it. For many women, it was worth it. For the people of Afghanistan, it was worth it. It built the human capital that we never had. It gave women rights and liberty that they had never experienced. It uh, generated the economy that we never had. It gave them the exposure. While they are asking, so what? They are all at the verge of disappearing, I would say, but the shift in the mindset that you created is not going to disappear. That is what is going to stay. The educated will not be uneducated. But at this point, when you are asking the question, was it worth it? Let me sum it up like this. It, that question would be answered depending on what you are going to do with it now. You invested so much, are you going to abandon and say it was not worth it and we are gonna forget about every all the sacrifices, all the investment, or you are going to still be committed and do something with it because there is a still opportunity to do things. I worry that, uh, that the administration um, has a gap in its policy and that gap is the defense of Kabul. Um, there's been a lot of opportunities for the president, uh, for other members of the administration to say that part of U.S. policy is to defend Kabul, and they've um, intentionally chosen not to say that. Um, and that's a real problem because while the Afghan military is likely incapable of independently defending, you know, certainly the entire countryside and likely uh, several population centers, Oh, man, he is potentially capable of defending Kabul. So from India's perspective, this cannot be good news. This is the fall of a government to which it had been quite supportive, both in uh, Hamid Karzai's time as well as in Ashokani's time. India had a very significant humanitarian uh, presence in Afghanistan, was doing a lot of infrastructure projects. So a return of the Taliban means that India lo no longer has a partner in Afghanistan with which it can work, and possibly also a return to the bad days. For Pakistan, and we'll spend some time talking about Pakistan, I imagine, right, for Pakistan, this is complicated. On the one hand, there's no question that many see them as the most immediate beneficiary of the return of the Taliban in, uh, in Kabul. And yet, you can't help but think that Islamabad wonders whether it has bitten off more than it can chew. The argument I am making, and I am not making it up, it's based on empirical evidence, is that if uh, women's rights is not a, uh, an act of charity, it's not only a moral responsibility, it is a national security interest imperative. And it's also very much directly linked and related to all the security strategies, whether it's counterterrorism or preventative measures or peace building, uh, you name it. But to do this right, we have all learned over and over that the counterterrorism strategy, that the security strategies are directly linked and intertwined to economic development. Once again, women are right at the center of that. The reality is, is the terrorist threat from Al Qaeda, from the Islamic State, from other Salafi jihadist organizations um, that are there and might emerge in the future. That's where the core vital U.S. national security interests was at the beginning. That's where it remains. And, um, and sadly, those terrorist organizations have not disappeared. Um, so what the uh, Biden administration is telling us is that we're gonna move to an over the horizon uh, counterterrorism uh, campaign. Um, that as anybody who has done counterterrorism professionally is, is very hard, um, even in the best of circumstances. I mean, for all sorts of practical reasons about the decline of actionable intelligence, the lengthy time to target for our air assets. Um, uh, uh, but it will be especially ineffective if the Taliban eventually does take Kabul and the U.S. is forced to withdraw its embassy entirely. 